The amazing multi-billion dollar Turkish dam record-breaking construction. The total value of the mega projects realized in Turkey in the last 20 years already exceeded $150 billion. The Turkish government started and completed many mega projects in different fields from defense to transportation, healthcare to energy, aviation and space industry to infrastructure. Located on the Koru River, the Yasafeli Dam and its hydroelectric power plant project have started to hold water. With a total water storage volume of approximately 2.2 billion cubic meters, the dam is Turkey's highest and world's fifth highest dam in double curvature concrete arch dam type with a height of 275 meters. The project is located on the Kora River, 70 kilometers southwest of Artvin in the eastern Black Sea region, with 635 large dams within its borders, Turkey is one of the world's most active dam-building countries. Many of the country's biggest dams were built in the Euphrates and Tigris basins in the Kurdish areas of southeastern Anatolia. The southeastern Anatolia project has transformed the economy, society, and ecosystem of a vast area with 19 hydropower projects and 17,000 square kilometers of irrigation systems. The record-breaking Yusufeli Dam is a hydroelectric power production project that will support a 550 megawatt power station. The dam is controversial because of its projected impact on the biodiversity within its reservoir area, along with the relocation of the locals. On February 26, 2013, the foundation stone was laid in a ceremony attended by Minister of Forestry and Waterworks, Vaisel Eriglu, and Minister of Labor and Social Security, Farek Selik. It is expected that the construction of the dam will cost approximately $270 million. The dam's opening date was initially set for May 29, 2018. As of 2018, the expected opening date was delayed to 2021. The first studies on the Yusufeli Dam were carried out in the 1970s and it was included in the Koro River Hydropower Development Master Plan in 1982. The feasibility report was completed in 1986 and the project was added to the National Plan in 1997. But as mentioned, the project will have crippling effects on the residents of the surrounding area. Standing on a hilltop overlooking the vast Kakar mountain range in Turkey's northeastern Artvin province, residents of Yusufeli are slowly watching their town drown. Each day, the water rises an estimated three feet, erasing gardens, graveyards, and streets. Then come the houses, historical churches, and old mosques. Lifetimes of memories are making way for one of Turkey's biggest hydroelectric dams meant to tap the fast running Koro River. Its construction is an impressive feat but comes at a cost. One of 13 planned or built hydropower facilities on the Kora, this one has uprooted approximately 7,400 residents in Yusufeli alone, locals say, as well as more people in surrounding villages. It's also uprooting the valley's unique biodiversity. It's home to 70 endemic plant species, and both residents and environmentalists have tried for years to fight the project to no avail. In a country that imports about three-quarters of its energy, according to the Turkish Ministry of Foreign Affairs, more domestic resources are needed. Hydropower has been a big part of the answer for decades, with more than 700 hydroelectric facilities, accounting for about 17% of Turkey's total electricity generation. But the long turn to hydropower has two potential downsides besides the drowned villages and lost history. Dams can spark tensions with downstream neighbors and climate change likely points to lower precipitation and lower power output than expected as happened in 2021. Unlike the bulk of Turkey's big dams which dot the Tigris and Euphrates rivers, the Yusufeli Dam perches on the Kora, which has only a tiny downstream portion in Georgia. But many of the Turkey's other big dams have reduced water flow to already water-stressed countries such as Syria and Iraq. What Yusufeli will do when it starts generating electricity fully is that it'll provide up to 550 58 megawatts of power, enough, in theory, to meet the demands of 2.5 million people. It should also improve the power output at other hydropower facilities on the Kora River, surrounded by steep mountains with the Kora tearing through the narrow valley and Yusufeli sitting on its banks, the area has long been deemed a suitable location for a dam, with initial studies for a potential project dating back to the 1970s. 
The Cora River Hydropower Development Master Plan was drawn up in the 1980s. Foundations for the dam were eventually laid in 2013. What was undermined was the foundation of village life in Yusufeli. Staring into the valley, the Yusufeli residents stand with their backs turned to what has in recent days become their new home. Sets of brand new, semi-high-rise buildings on a steep mountainside, a total of 2,620 apartment units spread out over four neighborhoods connected to one another by tunnels. There are playgrounds, shopping centers, new schools, and plenty of parking space. Residents say that they will live rent-free for the next five years. For some lower-income families, the new arrangement is an improvement. Still, everything is sterile and monotone, a far cry from the now half-submerged town with its lush rice fields, green farmland, fruit trees, and once bustling adventure tourism industry for rafting enthusiasts. In the next few years, a new town will sit on the banks of the currently rising lake. For now, it remains remote. The construction of the main viaduct spanning the valley has yet to be completed, and residents are using an extensive network of long tunnels and winding, partly unpaved, mountain roads to connect to the province's main highway. If you've heard, countries across the Middle East face a bleak future of declining rainfall, diminishing surface and groundwater supplies, and increasing desertification. Since 1998, the region has faced the worst drought conditions in 900 years. It is home to 10 of the 17 countries currently facing extremely high water stress. Soaring temperatures across the region, average summer temperatures are predicted to rise by 4 degrees Celsius by 2015, even if global rises are limited to 2 degrees Celsius, are increasing the evaporation of surface water, forcing an over-reliance on aquifers and groundwater supplies that are already at risk of over-exploitation. Between 2003 and 2010, parts of Turkey, Syria, Iraq, and Iran, along with Tigris and Euphrates rivers basins, lost 144 cubic kilometers of stored fresh water. 60% of the loss was attributed to groundwater pumping from underground reservoirs. Given this backdrop, it's alarming that the impact of the Middle East's climate climactic conditions on water supplies is being exasperated by dam projects that will worsen the already acute water stress and land degradation that is jeopardizing agriculture across the region. Turkey's southeastern Anatolia project is one of the largest and most controversial dam building programs globally. 22 dams are slated to be constructed along the Tigris and Euphrates rivers near Turkey's borders with Syria and Iraq. The project has attracted the ire of countries across the Middle East since its inception because of the impact it will have on critical water supplies in Turkey's southern neighbors. In recent months, Ankara has commenced filling the Ilusu Dam, the largest dam in the proposed network, further focusing attention on its actions and inflaming already tense relations with its neighbors. Turkey's dam and hydropower constructions on the Tigris and Euphrates are estimated to have cut water to Iraq by 80% since 1975, jeopardizing agriculture and natural habitats. Iraq has also been adversely affected by dam projects and agricultural developments in Iran. As a result of declining water, desertification, salination, and mismanagement, Iraq is currently losing an estimated 25,000 hectares of arable land annually, mostly in the south of the country. Syria has also been directly impacted by Ankara's dam building projects, which have reduced water flows to Syria by an estimated 40%. This has been particularly problematic for Damascus as water scarcity is more severe in Syria than in either Turkey or Iraq. The prolonged drought that started in 2006 devastated Syria's agriculture and forced large numbers of people into cities. It has also been linked to the social upheaval and unrest that led to the civil war in Syria. By 2011, Syria's total annual water withdrawal as a percentage of internal renewable water resources had reached 160% compared with 80% in Iraq and 20% in Turkey. Regional instability and political tensions arising from Turkey's incursions into northern Syria in recent years make the prospect of a negotiated water-sharing agreement between Turkey and its southern neighbors remote. Turkey has been accused of manipulating the present regional instability to further its agenda 
in the crisis-ridden Middle East, including by pursuing its ambitious plans to be a regional water superpower that would give it main control over the region's waters. In the end, the Yusuf Ali Dam project is expected to produce 1.9 billion kWh of energy annually, which will provide around $268.8 million of added value a year to the Turkish economy. President Erdogan said. So, as much as it has its downsides, the advantages are also vast that will take the country to the next level. And that's it from us today. Until next time, thanks for watching.